and we're recording. <laughs> Blooper reel. Hey, welcome back. I'm back too. Yeah, this is the original dynamic duo. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we just got back from seeing Hateful Eight. Uh, yeah, we did. And our backs are feeling it. Oh. Not really. Those chairs were really nice. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. We found like the the best movie theater seats oh, ever. Yeah. Lazy boys, recliner seats. Yes. Do it. Um, but yeah, we just got out of seeing Quentin Tarantino's eighth motion picture, The Hateful Eight, starring Kurt Russell, Walter Goggins, Samuel uh, Tim, Jackson, what's the guy from Reservoir Dogs. Oh, Tim it? Roth. Tim Roth's in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think are we? Are we Samuel even, Jackson, Jennifer it? Jason Lee, yeah. Channing Tatum, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, and basically, the story in a nutshell is Kurt Russell's character. Uh, they call him the Hangman. I can't remember his real real name right now, but. He is bringing his bounty, uh, this girl that's been uh, wanted for murder, and he's trying to get her to this Little Rock? Is it? Red, Rock. Red Rock. Red Rock. So he's trying to take her to Red Rock, and there's a huge blizzard going on, so then uh, they have to end up taking shelter while waiting for the blizzard to subside. Yep. And uh, they kind of run into a couple odd characters, and then things kind of escalate into like a little bit of a mystery. And, a little bit of a mystery? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it a little spoiler free for the folks out there <laughs> and so um, we're not gonna tell you much about the movie in terms of spoilers but that's the movie in a nutshell good things about this movie the acting the writing mm -hmm. uh, the directing the yeah. music for the most part which we'll kind of get into a little bit on some of the detractors uh, like Samuel Jackson we, we were talking about this is possibly some of his best work ever yeah and one of his best characters that he's ever put on screen okay. Easily. Uh, mm -hmm. Walton Goggins is amazing as per usual. If you've seen him in Justified, that's like one of my favorite shows. Um, he just, he's very good with dialogue, and when I heard he was in this movie, I wasn't surprised from watching him in Justified, no. and, uh, and he, he shines in this movie. I think we're going to see a lot more of Walter Goggins now. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. He's, he's a high talent that needs to be used. Uh, Kurt Russell, he's a mean man in this movie. He's... <laughs> Uh, but he he plays the part very well and pretty believably, I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there may have been a couple of moments where he's kind of chewing scenery or just kind of phoning it in, but I mean, they aren't super noticeable and they don't really detract from the experience of the film. Yeah, I, I think with Quentin Tarantino, I mean, in the end, he, he you know he's a fan of movies and the old style of movies, and it shows through this movie. A lot, um, especially with those landscape shots. The land, uh, it's a beautifully filmed movie. Um, I, I, we didn't get, obviously get to see it in the intended 70 millimeter, no. but you could tell they're wide. It's very wide angle shots, pan and scan. Like every shot could be almost a framed picture in a house, I thought. Oh yeah. Let's so. just make a calendar out of that movie. Yeah, that would be good. I would, I would have that calendar. I'd have that calendar. Yeah, yeah the acting was top notch. Um, the music, uh, the orchestra, at least the orchestral, I can't even talk. Uh, the orchestrated pieces, yes. The actual orchestral ones. Yes, that, that, those were amazing. I felt like it was, I don't know the composer, but he did a fantastic job. Uh, he really did. It, it really helps kind of immerse <laughs> you into this world of the Old West. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the problem is that you get some contemporary stuff in there too. And that really changes the atmosphere and kind of yanks you out of that Western world. Yeah, it, it did that for me. Uh, even though I like the music pieces, like to the ear, like mm -hmm. there's something you could drive to in the car too. But but they always suited. They, they always suited the film, mm -hmm. but they didn't suit the setting of the film. I felt. Yeah, because we were. He was doing such a good job at keeping it a historical, mm -hmm. timely movie, and then you throw in something from probably 1970s or the yeah. 80s and then it kind of just takes you out of the film a little bit yeah it really does the bad stuff really i mean zach and i were talking about this on the drive back here uh it the movie's not bad and it's no. kind of a weird movie I, I don't know if i really experienced this with a movie per se it, everything's good but it's just too dang long it, it's like a friend like if you have a party 
or you have like a get together at your house and then like a good friend of yours just kind of like sticks around after everyone else has left and you kind of get to the point where you're like okay i'm tired i should probably like, go to hey, bed hey yeah and they just <laughs> don't get the hint so then you end up staying up for like another hour or two it, it really is that friend that kind of overstays his welcome a little bit yeah there's just a uh... I think the movie's broken up into six chapters. Yeah, six chapters, I believe. And the chapters are just too darn long. Like, this movie is three hours long, and it feels three hours long, but not in a good way. Uh, they, they, I think the biggest thing, because Zach and I were trying to figure out why it was so long, and I think they, I mean, as much as we love to have backstory to characters and characterization mm -hmm. and have depth to each character, I think it was just too long of time that was de into developing the characters' backstories. Because really there's one was. scene in particular early on in the film where they're in a, a, a carriage or a, wa a, a wagon mm -hmm. and just back and forth like, hey, did you hear about this guy and what he did? And then they just kind of go like a yeah. half hour. I actually think that this movie, <clears throat> because of the chapter setting, probably would have worked better more in a Pulp Fiction style where you got a little bit of this character, a little bit of this character, a little bit of this character, here's them all together, here's a little bit of this guy, and then here's like some of the other ones together. I really think it would have worked better. And I mean, honestly, Tarantino could have easily cut a half an hour out of this movie. Yeah. Uh, th this is a movie that if somebody makes a fan edit, which I'm sure that they will, uh, I will, I'll go for the fan edit before I actually go and buy this movie, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it just it's just too long, and, and, and it's almost like a stage play, because each scene is very basic and it only stays there. So like, the first chapter is just going through the woods and the snow. It's beautiful, yeah. but... Well, it, the first two like, chapters is almost well, nothing but then the, but the second the chapter is like what we were saying, though, where it was like talking about that one character's backstory in mm -hmm. a wagon, and you just were in the wagon the whole time. It, it was like a bottle episode. And, um, yeah, and then and then they find this cabin, which if you've seen the trailers, so we're not spoiling anything. Yeah. And in that cabin, I was telling Zach, because like, we spend so much time in this cabin, I could draw you a map of the cabin. Totally. Like, it's, because uh, that's where you are for the rest of the film. Mm -hmm. if, if they were just cut down like a, by a half or even a, a quarter of each chapter, I think the movie would have mm -hmm. flowed a lot better. Oh, easily for sure. Mm -hmm. Again, we didn't hate it. It's not yeah. a bad movie by any means. It's just really could have used an intermission. Uh, yeah, which in the uh, Quentin Tarantino, that's his original intent, though. So most of you guys out there, if you go see in the movies, you're going to see how Zach and I saw it. But mm -hmm. I know uh, Quentin Tarantino was doing a roadshow tour where he was actually, the movie's actually, believe it or not, 15 or 20 minutes longer. Oh, God. Uh, and then <laughs> they have first an orchestral, <laughs> like, a uh, I can't orchestral? Say it. Of course, yeah. I can't say that word today. Orchestral. They had an intro, a music intro, uh, when you were walking in, and then they even had the intermission. So, like, th it would have helped the flow of watching the movie, having a break in between. Oh, and, for sure. Uh, but, and then at, and maybe at home it might be better, because then you could be like, oh, I'm just going to watch chapters one through three today. Yeah. It's, it kind of reminds me of Glorious Bastards, because they had the the chapter intros to each thing. I don't think he does that in all of his movies. With no, chapters, he doesn't. But it, it does it like how Inglourious Bastards did. Uh, also, just take note, like, my fiance loves westerns and like, hey, he's, he's not really violent in this movie. It's like the first half is pretty low-key and then the second half's gory, bloody. So, there's yeah. a reason it's rated R. Besides the, the, the N-word being thrown around like a Yeah, you times. could make that a drinking game. And you'd be passed out by uh, halfway through the movie. You, you'd probably be dead almost by the uh, end of chapter two. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. so um, again, we, we love his style. I hope he keeps making films for a while, um, but I think he needs to tone it down in the, the pacing and to maybe make it two and a half. I think it'd be better at like two hours, two and a half hours, but not three. Yeah, th this one, it's just, like, there's things in there that are completely unnecessary. Um, like, I mean, th this isn't really a spoiler, but we, like, during the blizzard that keeps them all in the cabin, the guys say that they're going to run a rope to the outhouse. Yeah. And you basically get to watch them do the entire rope to the outhouse, which is like five or ten There's minutes. very dramatic music, remember? It was like, yeah. I actually thought someone was going to die. No one dies yeah. in that scene. They're just pinning these anchors, 
and then the music's like crescendoing, and like you think something's gonna happen, and it just stops. There wasn't really yeah. The outhouse wasn't that. Nobody big goes to the bathroom in this movie. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> Nobody. They held it in. Yeah, apparently. And the movie's got great acting, great atmosphere, a great uh, music score, but maybe they could have done better without actually including contemporary music. Um, and really, it just was the, the the pacing, and if there was just a little bit of shaving off some time and maybe just focusing on the story at hand and maybe not so much the backstory of the characters. I think the movie would have probably been pretty perfect in our eyes. Yeah, but that being said, if you like westerns and you don't mind gore, if you like a good mystery, or if you just like Quentin Tarantino, go see it. it it's by all means a good movie. You need to it's see just, it. Th these few little gripes that we have are really the only problems that we have. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I mean, we ended up giving it a final score of a hateful 7 out of 10. Yeah, again, if you're um, a, a, like us and just enjoy movies, you need to go see this. It's mm -hmm. it's a, a tour de force to cinema, um, and we, we're so lucky to have people like Quentin Tarantino in the business still, because I think they're kind of anchoring us to the past. Yeah. And it needs to be done. We can't just think shiny and... Yeah. Well, I don't want a bunch of Michael Bay's everybody. Uh, go see Hateful Eight. It should be in most cinemas now. Mm -hmm. And um, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, um, Tumblr, Tumblr, YouTube, yeah, obviously. obviously. Uh, and please hit that subscribe button. Um, we, um, yeah, we're, we're doing more things. We're going to be testing the waters. January and February is a little slow, so we're going to probably throw some Blu-ray reviews out. Yep. Uh, maybe some other out outside the box ideas uh or check out the kylo ren video that thing's got like six thousand views and, oh yeah people uh, our, have been loving it our uh our pal aaron and uh his friend taryn uh they did a very good job and very entertaining to watch too oh, yeah. <laughs> are they gonna make a dengar movie <laughs> so uh again this is jeff and i'm zach and please stay with nerd park we appreciate your viewership and your ears for the podcast and uh, we'll see you soon stay nerdy